The battle is already in full swing when the artillery unit gets their orders. Their battle cat, Sioma, follows the commander to the U.S.-provided M777 gun, and they get to work. So the soldiers have now been given a target, and they're working as fast as possible to try and fire as many rounds as accurately towards the Russian positions. Three rounds, that's it. The commander tells me ammo shortages are a real problem here. There is more of a deficit, he says. When we were in Zaporizhia direction, we used 50 to 60 shells a day. Now it's 20 to 30 maximum. The resupply truck only brings a few more rounds, and with U.S. military aid ground to a halt, things could get even tougher for the Ukrainians soon. We're near Marinka on the eastern front. The Russians recently managed to take Marinka after essentially annihilating the entire town with their artillery. Moscow's forces face no ammo shortages, the Ukrainians say, after getting around a million artillery rounds from North Korea in the past year. Even as we prepare to leave, the position is under Russian fire. We drive away, constantly watching for Russian drones and possible artillery impacts. Different day, different front line, similar problems for Ukraine's forces, major shortages. We're in the battle zone near Avdivka with a special forces unit called Omega. It's 22 degrees below freezing. They want to fire artillery rockets at the Russians, but lacking Western arms, they've mounted a Soviet-era launcher on a U.S.-made pickup truck. They set up fast, but then this. Yeah. So one of the issues that the Ukrainians have using this very old technology is that sometimes it simply doesn't work. It's very cold right now. They think something's frozen and it's just not working. All they can do is de-rig and leave before the Russians see them. We wanted to strike at the enemy's positions, but unfortunately, sometimes it happens. The equipment does not work, he says. Technology does not stand still, and as we can see in this war, the technologies from the West are giving very good results. The unit later did manage to fire three rockets after troubleshooting for several hours. Delays that can be costly in a war where Ukraine is already badly outgunned. So as you can see there, Jake, shortages of ammunition, shortages also of modern weapons as well. But one of the things that we did notice is that morale among the Ukrainians is actually still very high. They do say that they're stopping most of those Russian uh, assaults, but they also say that it's becoming more difficult as those ammo shortages become more pronounced. Of course, they also say that that, in effect, is going to lead to more casualties on the Ukrainian side. Jake? All right, Fred Plykin in Ukraine for us. Thank you so much.